warm greetings to all myself dr ds jayalakshmi working as an assistant professor in department of physics school of science and humanities satyabama institute of science and technology deem to be university chennai today my lecture topic is about thermal conductivity derivation this is one of the part in weidmann franz law weidmann franz law is one of the important topic uh, in the course physics for engineers and uh, physics for information sciences for all the be and btech students in our curriculum actually this law connects relation between the thermal conductivity and the electrical conductivity how it relates with the temperature and the lorentz number the ratio of thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity is directly proportional to temperature here the proportionality constant as lorentz number so how we are going to derive this lorentz number by using classical theory and quantum theory so in this part 1 session we are going to discuss about thermal conductivity derivation by using classical approach as well as quantum approach so finally we are going to prove the experimental value of lorentz number weidmann franz law so as i said weidmann franz law is the ratio between thermal conductivity k and electrical conductivity sigma is directly proportional to temperature so here the proportionality constant as we are using l l is a lorentz number k thermal conductivity sigma electrical conductivity l is a lorentz number so l how we can derive by using the weidmann franz law l we can state that k by sigma t so the ratio of thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity at a various temperature the ratio of k by sigma is always a constant the lorentz number as i said by using quantum approach we are proving the experimental value of lorentz number as 2.44 into 10 to the power minus 8 watt ohm per kelvin square by classical approach the lorentz number is not proved as uh, coinciding with the experimental value by using the classical approach the lorentz number is 1.12 into 10 to the power minus 8 watt ohm per kelvin square so both the approaches we are going to see in our session so first we will start with classical approach to derive the thermal conductivity k so thermal conductivity actually thermal conductivity is uh, directly proportional to amount of heat radiated per unit area per unit time in order to maintain unit temperature gradient so here the heat is directly proportional to the temperature gradient so we'll start our classical free electron theory approach to derive thermal conductivity k so first we are considering one rod so in this rod we are heating at one end so we are considering it as hot end so from the hot end to the cold end the temperature will be transferred so nearer to the hot end i am considering the point a the temperature is t so away from the hot end i am considering one more point b here the temperature is less than the point a so that i can consider t minus dt some difference in temperature between the point a and b is exist so here the distance between a to the point b i can consider it is mean free path actually mean free path is nothing but the average distance traveled by the electron between two successive collision so in our successive slide i will explain the same so here we are considering the electron is moving along x axis y axis z axis so if we are considering x y z so we want to consider minus x minus y minus z so totally the electron can distribute around the rod at six different directions six different directions are given here so here uh, what we are considering the mean free path as i mentioned the average distance traveled by an electron between two successive collision so here the small video i have shown actually what is happening i am eating the rod so when i am heating the rod means all the molecules are bombarding it means all the electrons are colliding with uh, everyone so when they are colliding so the distance traveled by an electron between two successive collision see due to the collision the electron is traveling a certain distance so what here we are considering a rod within the rod due to heat due to external heat energy the molecules are getting bombardment so due to that the molecule displacement occurs so here we are considering in the point of electron so the electron is moving due to the collision so this distance we are considering as mean free path now as i said we are heating the rod so the electrons are moving when the electrons are moving due to the external heat energy so that the electrons are subjected to kinetic energy 
So, we all know that the kinetic energy of mv square. According to the classical theory approach, we are stated of mv square is 3 by 2 kbt. Here kb represents Boltzmann constant. So, as is the constant 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 joule per kelvin. So, here the of mv square we stated uh, from the rod is equated to 3 by 2 kbt at a point A. If we are considering the point B, the temperature is T minus dt. So, we are stated that kinetic energy at a point A is 3 by 2 kbt. The same kinetic energy at a point B, we can state that 3 by 2 kb t minus dt because at a point B, the temperature is T minus dt which is away from the hot end. So, the temperature is less than the point A. So, we are going to find out the net uh, kinetic energy between the point A to B. So, that we are subtracting 3 by 2 kbt minus 3 by 2 kbt minus dt. So, 3 by 2 kbt is the kinetic energy of the electron at a point A. 3 by 2 kbt minus dt is the kinetic energy of an electron at a point B because the temperature exists at a point B is T minus dt. Now, the net kinetic energy between the point A to B is 3 by 2 kbt minus 3 by 2 kb of T minus dt. So, 3 by 2 kbt, 3 by 2 kbt are cancelled. So, minus minus plus. So, the net kinetic energy between the points A to B is 3 by 2 kb dt. So, this is what our first equation. Next, as we discussed, so the electrons undergone six different directions. So, out of six different direction, we are considering one axis, x axis alone we are considering. So, the electron is moving in a rod due to the external heat energy along the x axis. So, only one axis out of six axis. So, that we are considering it as 1 by 6. So, the number of electrons which are moving along x axis alone. So, 1 by 6 n. So, n is the number of free electrons in a conductor per unit volume. The electrons are moving in a certain speed. B is the average velocity of the electron. So, now we are considering the number of electron moving from the point A to B per unit time is 1 by 6 n v. N is the total number of free electrons in a conductor per unit volume. Then V is the average velocity of an electron. We are considering from the equation 1, 1 by 6 NV into 3 by 2 kbt. The net kinetic energy we derived from the equation 1 is 3 by 2 kb dt. Now, the total number of electrons with the velocity traveling from the point A to B is 1 by 6 NV. So, the heat energy distributed from the point A to B. The point A is nearer to the hot end, the point B is far away from the hot end. So, the heat is traveling from the point A to B. So, the amount of heat energy traveled from the point A to B is number of electrons with the velocity into its own kinetic energy of single electron. So, I am multiplying the total number into individual kinetic energy. So, the total amount of energy traveled from a to B is 1 by 6 NV into 3 by 2 KB dt. So, by cancelling out uh, 6 and 3, we are getting that 1 by 4 NV KB dt. This is the heat energy distributed from the point A to B. When the heat energy is travelled from x to y, it means from the point A to B, the heat energy will be returned back from the point B to A because the electrons are moving along forward motion as well as backward motions. So, the heat energy is distributed from the point A to B as well as the same amount of heat energy will be distributed from B to A. From the equation 2, we derived the amount of heat energy distributed from the point A to B that is what 1 by 4 NB KB dt. So, the same amount of energy is written back, but in different direction. So, that I can say the amount of heat energy is distributed from the point B to A is minus 1 by 4 NV kb dt. The heat energy is same, but in different direction. So, A to B is the forwarded direction, B to A is the backward direction, so that I am using negative sign. So, QBA I can represent it as minus 1 by 4 nv kb dt. Now, as uh, we find out the net kinetic energy, here we are going to find out net heat energy from the point q to a to b 
Q of B to A. So, here 1 by 4 N B K B D T is the amount of heat energy travelled from A to B. Minus 1 by 4 N B K B D T is amount of heat energy travelled from B to A. So, that the net heat energy is equation 2 minus equation 3, we are getting that 1 by 2 N V K B D T. So, this is what we are considering as equation 4. So, according to the definition as we discussed initially, the thermal conductivity is defined as amount of heat per unit area per unit time in order to maintain unit temperature gradient. Amount of heat denoted by the letter Q, unit area, area denoted by a letter A, time denoted by a letter T, temperature gradient denoted by a term dt by dx. As we consider per unit area, area is 1 meter square per unit time. So, time is 1 second. So, temperature gradient dt by dx. So, this equation we can manipulate it as k is equal to q by d theta by dx. Actually, what is dx? dx is mean free path. It means distance travelled by the electron from the point A to B. So, the mean free path we consider as lambda. So, instead of dx, here we are substituting as lambda. So, k is equal to q by dt by lambda. So, q is equal to, I can rewrite is k into dt by lambda. From equation 4, already we have q is 1 by 2 nv kb dt. This is what from our experiment part. Now, based on definition, basic definition we derived q is equal to k into dt by lambda. This is what we are considering as equation 5. So, equation 4 and 5 both gives the expression of amount of heat energy as by experiment and by definition. So, now we are going to equate both. By equating both of nv kb dt, this is equal to k of dt by lambda. Actually, what is the aim of our topic? We are going to derive thermal conductivity. So, we need the expression of thermal conductivity. By equating these two equations, we are getting the expression of k. So, we are getting equation 6. This is what our final expression of k. k is by equating 4 and 5, we are getting of nv lambda kb. n is the total number of free electron per unit volume. v is the average velocity of the electron. Lambda is the mean free path. kb is the Boltzmann constant as we discussed earlier. So, now k is equal to of nv lambda kb. This is the expression of k by using experiment as well as definition part. Now, the lambda can be rewritten in term of relaxation time. Actually, what is relaxation time? When we are heating the rod, electrons undergone kinetic energy. When we are heating the rod, electron undergone collision. Due to the collision, they are moving a certain distance. So, we are stated the distance is mean free path. So, the time in between the two successive collision, it is represented as relaxation time. The time taken by a free electron to reach the equilibrium position from the disturbed position in presence of external heat energy or any external force. So, now we are rewriting lambda in term of relaxation time. So, sixth equation we are manipulating in term of tau relaxation time. So, what is the relation between mean free path and relaxation time? Mean free path lambda equation 7 states lambda is equal to tau into v. So, we are substituting equation 7 in equation 6. So, we can state k is equal to of nv instead of lambda we are using tau into kb. So, that the final expression is of nv square tau kb. So, equation 8 represents the expression of thermal conductivity by using classical approach and by using the term of relaxation time. So, equation 6 and 8 both gives the expression of thermal conductivity by using the classical approach. In equation 6, we are using mean free path. In equation 8, we are using relaxation time. So, finally, we are getting of nv square kb tau. This is the expression of thermal conductivity according to classical free electron theory approach. Now, 
we are going to derive the same thermal conductivity expression by using quantum theory approach. In quantum theory approach additionally we are using one term that is what effective mass of an electron. What is effective mass of an electron? When the change in mass of an electron when the electron is subjected to any external force or collisions. Actually in classical theory we are not considered effective mass of an electron. Classical theory failed to explain about effective mass of an electron, but quantum theory gains the point of effective mass of an electron. By using effective mass of an electron, how I can derive thermal conductivity? Here we are considering electronic specific heat coefficient. By using the term of electronic specific heat coefficient, we are considering the effective mass of an electron. So what is electronic specific heat coefficient? It is defined as the ratio of the portion of the heat used by the electron to rise in temperature. Electronic specific heat coefficient denoted by the letter C in suffix E. See here when the electrons are at rest, electronic specific heat coefficient is 3 by 2 n kb denoted by the expression A. When the electrons are in motion, the electronic specific heat coefficient are denoted by the expression n pi square kb square t by m star v square. Here the m star is effective mass of an electron. What is effective mass of an electron? When the change in mass of the electron, the change in mass of the electron when it is subjected to external force or during collision of the electron. So we can state uh, when the electrons are in motion, the electronic specific heat coefficient is n pi square kb square t by m star v square. Now from the equation 8, finally we derived thermal conductivity is 1 by 2 n kb v square tau. Now I am rewriting the equation 8 what we derived in the previous case by using the classical approach. We are rewriting by using the term A by using the equation number A. Actually equation A we can rewrite it as Ce by 3 is equal to of nkb. So as per a classical approach the thermal conductivity derivation we derived as of nkb b square tau. So by using the equation C of nkb we are rewriting it as Ce by 3. C is electronic specific heat coefficient. So now we are rewriting our equation 8 by using electronic specific heat coefficient Ce by 3 v square tau. We are heating the rod, the electrons uh, are in motion. So the electrons are in motion means we want to consider equation B. So by substituting Ce by using equation B, we are uh, writing as by using equation B, B can be rewritten as n pi square kb square t by m star v square by 3 into v square tau. So now we are getting by substituting electronic specific heat coefficient of the electron are in motion in equation D we are getting n pi square kb square t in numerator. Then in denominator 3 m star v square the whole term is multiplied by v square tau. So finally what we are doing pi square by 3 I have taken out then v square v square are cancelled. So the remaining term we are getting that n kb square t tau by m star. So this is the final expression of thermal conductivity by using quantum approach including the term of effective mass of an electron. So equation E represents quantum approach of thermal conductivity by using the term effective mass of an electron. So by using the classical approach quantum approach how we can derive Lorentz number in our next session we will discuss. So as of in this session we discuss that classical theory derivation for thermal conductivity gives 1 by 2 nv square tau kb. According to quantum theory the thermal conductivity expression is pi square by 3 n kb square t into tau by m star. So we are included the effective mass of an electron term. By using the same effective mass of an electron how we can derive electrical conductivity? By using the classical and quantum theory how we can able to prove the Lorentz number as well as the experimental value in our next session we will discuss. Thank you to all.